I thought the screen was keeping up with me. Well, let's talk about something while we wait for the, uh, the screen. Here we go. All right. The parking lot, by the way, there is progress there. We have uh, uh, all the light poles being poured and put in place this week, so look for big things to happen in the next couple of weeks. All right, we're going to start all over again. Let's begin in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. And together we pray. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins as a called and ordained servant of Christ. And by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Heavenly Father speaks to us this evening first through the prophet Jeremiah, beginning at chapter 20. O Lord, you have deceived me, and I was deceived. You are stronger than I, and you have prevailed. I have become a laughing stock all the day. Everyone mocks me. For whenever I speak, I cry out, I shout, violence and destruction. For the word of the Lord has become for me a reproach and derision all day long. If I say I will not mention him or speak any more in his name, there is in my heart, as it were, a burning fire shut up in my bones, and I am weary with holding it in, and I cannot. For I hear many whispering, terror is on every side. Denounce him, let us denounce him. Say all my close friends, watching for my fall. Perhaps he will be deceived. Then we can overcome him and take our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me as a dread warrior. Therefore, my persecutors will stumble. They will not overcome me. They will be greatly shamed, for they will not succeed. Their eternal dishonor will never be forgotten. O Lord of hosts, who tests the righteous, who sees the heart and the mind, let me see your vengeance upon them. For to you have I committed my cause. Sing to the Lord. Praise the Lord. For he has delivered the life of the needy from the hand of evildoers. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is from Romans chapter 6. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal bodies to make you obey their passions. Do not present your members to sin as instruments for unrighteousness, but present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and your members to God as instruments for righteousness. For sin will have no dominion over you, since you are not under law, but under grace. What then are we to sin, because we are not under law, but under grace? By no means. Do you not know that if you present yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness? But thanks be to God that you who were once slaves of sin have become obedient from the heart to the standard of teaching to which you were committed, and having been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness. I am speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations, for just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurity and to lawlessness, leading to more lawlessness, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness leading to sanctification. When you were slaves of sin, you were freed in regard to righteousness. But what fruit were you getting at that time from the things of which you are now ashamed? The end of those things is death. But now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves of God, the fruit you get leads to sanctification and its end, eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 10th chapter. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. These 12 Jesus sent out, instructing them, brother will deliver brother over to death, and the father his child, and children will rise against parents and have them put to death, And you will be hated by all for my name's sake. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in one town, flee to the next. For truly, I say to you, you will not have gone through all the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. A disciple is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his master. It is enough for the disciple to be like his teacher and the servant like his master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered that will not be revealed or hidden that will not be known. What I tell you in the dark, say in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim on the housetops. And do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? And not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. But even the hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore, you are of more value than many sparrows. So everyone who acknowledges me before men, I also will acknowledge before my father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, 
I also will deny before my Father who is in heaven. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. And children, please come forward. guys, how are you? We doing all right tonight? All right, we just got, we'll wait one more minute for Claire. She's coming up too, and her special escort as well. How are we doing today? Are we good? Okay, I'm gonna ask you a question. Who's really good at counting? You. Three? Three? Okay, four, five? A, a lot of us are really good at counting, right? So, 30? A hundred, okay. Who can beat a hundred? hundred, easy. Thousand? Yeah, okay. So, good counters here. All right, so here's what I want you to do. I'd like you to take a moment now and count all the hairs on your head. Go. <laughs> well, some of us have more, some have less, but we have a lot of hairs on our head, right? Is it even possible? Is it possible to count them? I don't think I could do it, but you know what we heard Jesus say today? Our Heavenly Father knows how many hairs each of us have on our heads. Isn't that crazy? You got 33 hairs? <laughs> I'll bet you do have at least that many. Jesus was making this point. He said, when he said, even the hairs on your head are numbered, what he was saying was, God knows you so completely. God knows you so absolutely that you can trust him with everything, right? He loves you so much, and he knows everything about you, and he knows that you're saved by Jesus who died on the cross for each one of us, right? So God knows more about us than anyone else in the whole universe because he loves us so much. That was the point Jesus was making. God loves you so much. So we don't have to worry about counting the hairs on our heads, right? Because God, he's got it already. And one day when we're with him, maybe we can ask him how many that we have, right? Well, we can talk about that later, too. Why don't we pray right now, okay? Let's pray together. Pray after me. Dear Jesus, thank you for loving me. Heavenly Father, thank you for knowing me. I love you. Amen. Thank you so much for coming up.
Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from the Lord our Savior, Jesus Christ. Today we're going to look at the book of Jeremiah and how the prophet Jeremiah finds a way to hold in his hands the universe of complaint and the universe of praise. I, uh, I use that word universe. I've been watching, kind of binge watching, you know how you get on a show and you just you keep watching it. Doctor Who is my show right now. And, Time travel doctor ends up in different times, different places, different universes. Some of you are very familiar and some of you are like, yeah, that's not my jam. That's okay. But what I was thinking about as I was watching an episode this week and pretty much more as I was reading Jeremiah, I have to let you know my sermon's not inspired by Doctor Who. It's inspired by Jeremiah. But as I was thinking about this idea of living in worlds that are colliding, this is the struggle that Jeremiah is going through, and it's a struggle maybe you're going through, where you're in a universe of complaint, and it seems like everyone else around you is in a universe of praise. Or maybe you're in that universe of praise, and you just can't figure out right now why people are in complaint. Or maybe you're at a spot where the two worlds keep colliding in such a way that there's just a thunderstorm and a lightning blast is just so much of what you're going through right now. I want to let you know, first of all, the world of praise that Jeremiah lives in. Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 4 through 10. Now the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. I mean, there's a lot of praise and confidence, and there's something great about to happen in those words. Then I said, Ah, Lord God, behold, I don't know how to speak. I'm only a youth. So you're talking to the wrong guy, but the Lord said to me, Do not say I am only a youth, for to all whom I send you, you shall go, and whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, declares the Lord. Then the Lord put his hand, and he touched my mouth, and the Lord said to me, I have put my words in your mouth. I have set you this day over nations and over kingdoms. I pluck up, I break down, I destroy, I overthrow, I build, and I plant." So Jeremiah starts as a book with the confidence that he is in the Lord's hand and the Lord says, I am the one that's able to do it all. So with me, we're going to do it all. That's Jeremiah's confidence. All right, we're going to time travel now to Jeremiah chapter 20. Jeremiah chapter 20 verses 7 through 13 is uh, kind of a, a song of lament, their struggle. Well, let's find out what is this struggle that kind of set him off in his complaint. Jeremiah 20, verses 1 through 6. There's a man named Posher. Posher's the priest, and he's the chief officer. He's the kind of guy that if someone's misbehaving in the temple, he comes and he yanks them out. That's Posher's job. Now, what does Posher do? Well, he hears Jeremiah prophesying things about the destruction of Jerusalem, how the Babylonian Empire is not going to fall. The Babylonian Empire is just getting stronger, and they're going to be so strong that Jerusalem and Judah are all falling apart. So Posher hears Jeremiah telling about the destruction of the temple, the destruction of the city, the destruction of the country. And Posher's like, no, you don't get to do that here. This is supposed to be a place where good things are said. This is a universe of praise, and you're bringing a bunch of complaint. You're out of here. So Posher beat Jeremiah the prophet. He put him in the stocks. You know, you kind of imagine like Colonial Williamsburg or Greenfield. I don't think Greenfield Village is really on that vibe. But, you, you, you know, you put your hands in, your head in, and put your feet in. Jeremiah is there. And they put him in the upper Benjamin Gate, which is like the, the one that everybody goes by. The next day, Posture releases Jeremiah from the stocks, and Jeremiah said, the Lord isn't going to call you Posture anymore, but terror on every side, because you have brought terror to the people of God. So Jeremiah 20, verse 7 now, is Jeremiah talking to God about what it's like to live in the darkness of the stocks for a whole night. He said, Lord, you deceived me, I was deceived. You are stronger than I. You've prevailed. And the result of you being really strong and prevailing over me is everyone's laughing at me. I have become a laughingstock all the day. Everyone mocks me. 
Jeremiah is existing in a difficult moment where pain and suffering are starting to scour around the foundations of his faith. And, and in this moment, he, he probably wants to remember from chapter 1, verse 4, about how the Lord said, even before you conceived, even before you were conceived, I knew you and I ordained you and I consecrated you. You are going to be my prophet. And he's thinking, if I'm supposed to be your prophet, why does this keep happening to me? And Jeremiah is going to kind of stick in this moment. And he's going to keep talking to God until he can start to see blessing. And this starts to get at how you live in a world of holding complaint and praise together. You stick in that world that God has brought you into. You stick into that world of complaint and pain and suffering that God has guided you into, and you stay in that moment until you start to find blessing. i give you a couple examples from someone else besides Jeremiah. We're going to now look at Abraham. Abraham, you know, we got, what is that, like Genesis 12 through about like Genesis 25, right around there. Childless. He's struggling. He's been told by God, I'm going to build a great nation through you, and all the nations of the earth are going to be blessed through you. You are the guy. Kind of what Jeremiah heard. You are the guy. Abraham heard it. I'm the guy. And then struggles and pains, frustrations. There's so many dead ends in his life. Isaac is born And there's life and there's praise and there's opportunity to see the world just filled with stars and sands on the shore. And everything is filled with praise. And then the Lord says, you're going to take Isaac, your only son Isaac, and you're going to take him to this mountain that I'm going to show you. And you're going to offer a sacrifice. And he takes Isaac, he takes a couple of the servants, and he leaves the servants behind. And Isaac says, Father, I see the wood for the sacrifice, but where is the sacrifice? And this is a moment of uh, how does this moment go forward? It's a moment I'd want to run away from. A moment where Abraham has been called by God to take his son Isaac to this mountain and sacrifice him. It's a pain and suffering that the Lord is leading Abraham into. How long does Abraham stay in this moment He stays until the blessing shows up. He has trust and confidence that the God who can make the world and can give him a promise is the God that can keep the promise. He stays in the complaint until the blessing shows up. Martin Luther, I've got a couple quotes from Martin Luther in the sermon. The first one, so when we are being disciplined and feel sad, Luther said, we shouldn't fight against our troubles, but rather remind ourselves. From Psalm 118, I will not die, but I will live. That the the world that God has brought me into is a world where God is bigger than all things. Anything and everything that could happen to you of pain and suffering, that could do its worst to pull you away from God, everything in this world does not have the power to kill God. There's nothing that has the power to to destroy God. The God that has made promises to you is the God that cannot be killed by this warrior. God finds a way to bring a blessing. All right, another guy from the Old Testament, Jacob. Now, this is Genesis 35. So there's Abraham and Isaac, and Isaac had these two sons, Jacob and Esau. Jacob stole Esau's birthright. Esau is mad. Next time I see you, you're done, Jacob. So Jacob leaves. Now years have passed, and Jacob's going to return home, but he is not so sure how Esau is going to receive him. He sends his servants. He sends essentially the force of strength that he is in front of him. And he spends the night by the Jabbok River, and he He's going to be alone and just kind of steal himself for what's coming up. And in the night, as he's preparing to meet Esau, 
as he's expecting shame, as he's expecting derision, as he's expecting everything but praise from Esau, he meets a man in the night. A stranger in the night comes and wrestles with him. There's fear. There's wrestling. Jacob's hip is pushed out of socket. And the man he's wrestling with says, let me go. The, the day's breaking. You might not remember what Jacob says there. Uh, not Jacob's 30, Genesis 35. What is it? Genesis 32? Something like that. Anyway, J- Jacob says such a remarkable thing that you've got to hold on to this as you read the rest of Scripture where there's lament and complaint and frustration when there's fear and there's, when there's night. When, you, when you're expecting shame, when you're expecting derision, hold on to this thing that, that Jacob says. I will not let you go until you bless me. Fred Niener, uh, speaking at Camp Arcadia last year, said about difficult passages. You work and you wrestle with the text until it brings you blessing. Don't let it go until it blesses you. I trust God means for me to be a blessing. I trust that as what he's promised is I'm going to bless you. I'm going to keep you. I'm going to make my face to shine upon you, be gracious to you. I'm going to lift up my favor upon you. I trust God means blessing instead of curse. As I study his word and as I live in this world, I wrestle. I complain. I feel hopeless, and yet the Holy Spirit pulls me into moments when there's going to be suffering. The Holy Spirit pulls me into these moments of a universe where complaint seems so present I could never imagine blessing and praise could show up in this moment. And God in this wrestling, and God in this pain and complaint, he works it. He works it. He brings blessing. What did Jacob hear? So Jacob said, the the man says, well, tell me your name. And he says, Jacob. And the Lord says, no, now your name's going to be Israel, which means the one who has struggled with God. I think the ability to find praise in a world where there's complaint is the ability to be comfortable with that moment of wrestling with God and realize that he is going to wrestle with you, he's going to bring you some pain, he's going to bring you some suffering, and yet he is never the one that's going to scour your foundation. He's never the one that's going to take away blessing. He's always going to find a way to bring blessing. Jeremiah, prophet, he sees, he sees it. That's, that's what Pastor the priest got all upset. Jeremiah, the prophet, he sees the fall of Jerusalem is on its way. He sees the fall of the temple. He sees the fall of Judah. He sees it on its way. And others around him can only imagine that God could be present if everything is good. So they can't listen to Jeremiah because they think Jeremiah's words about the temple falling, Jerusalem falling, and Judah falling, that those words are also saying God is falling. So they only want to hear good news because any bad news must mean there's no more God. But Jeremiah, as he speaks these words of complaint and frustration and disappointment, he is a prophet that knows that that God has the power to bring blessing. All right, so another Luther quote. Luther said, Be of good courage, for even though all die, yet I am alive. I, I find promise. This is now speaking as if God's speaking to you. I am alive. I repeat my promise to you. As you grieve and weep, I repeat my promise to you. And so I think about it. When I feel helpless, when I, when, I can't, when I can't stand back up because I've been so pushed down by what's happened. When everything around me has died, I've got to place my trust in the one that has died and lived again. This is what it means for me to believe in Jesus. That from my nothing, From my nothing, Jesus is going to walk with me. He's going to join me in that nothing moment, like Psalm 22, right? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? That for me to believe in Jesus is not just that there's something, but it's when there's nothing, he's still there. 
that in my nothing he walks with me. And he cries out with me, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And then he moves me with mercy into resurrection and life. Jeremiah the prophet said, the Lord, the Lord comes and he is my dread warrior. He is the one that defeats death. He is the one, he's the one that in Genesis 1, right? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. You know that word created right there in the scriptures only, there's other words for created, but this one, it only ever has God as the subject of that verb created. Because in my complaint, when I can't create or make or do anything but just sit in this pain, the one who created the heavens and the earth is the one who is able to bring blessing to me. If anyone ever wants to know what it means and believe in Jesus, it means to know that there's never nothing. When God is around, there's always going to be a blessing. May that be the key peace that keeps and guards your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus this day and each day. Amen. Let's stand. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. It's the season of graduation, and we want to take just a moment and acknowledge anyone here today who's graduating from eighth grade or from high school, from college, or from some advanced degrees. Well, so if you are a graduate this year, could you please stand so we can recognize you for just a moment? <laughs> Nathaniel and Ethan, God bless you both as you as you begin this journey toward Lutheran High Northwest and all the joys that come with being a high school student, including getting your driver's license. All right, <laughs> let's rise and pray. God of our salvation, your son warned that your people would face opposition from the world. Give courage and fortitude to your people that they would boldly sing your praises, gladly endure suffering for the name of Jesus. Turn our hearts continually to Christ, that we would present our bodies as instruments of righteousness and continue by your grace to the end. Lord, in your mercy. Father in heaven, grant unity of faith within households of this congregation. Give wisdom and peace where there is anger and strife. Bless parents with faithfulness to teach their children your ways. Lord, we thank and praise you for Nathaniel, for Ethan, for all the graduates, Lord, here at Our Shepherd. We pray you would bless them mightily as they walk this new path in their lives. We also pray, Lord, in thanksgiving for all the youth and adults who are at the youth gathering on Mackinac Island. Bless them, Lord, with a time of closeness to each other and to you and bring them safely home. Lord, in your mercy. God of all creation, bless the authorities in our land with wisdom to seek the common good. Deliver them from temptations to promote evil and oppose your will. Give them penitent hearts that they might be confident of your grace for them. Lord, in your mercy. Holy God, look with favor upon those who are persecuted for the name of Jesus. 
Strengthen them to endure and make known your mercy through the witness of their suffering. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, keep our feet from falling and preserve us from fear. Make us confident that since you have delivered our souls from death, you will deliver us to walk before you in the light of everlasting life. Give healing and strength to those in need, especially to Linda Madsen, who is hospitalized and recovering from surgery. For Kate Krupski, who is home recovering. Ann Thompson, Tammy Sellers' aunt, who is suffering from severe memory loss. Lord, we pray for all those who suffer among us. Give peace and strength to those who mourn, especially to Brian and Emily Smetanka, friends of the Stroders family as they mourn the death of their daughter, Ellie. Lord, bless them with your peace and with the sure and certain hope of the eternal life you promise through your son, Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of life, we praise you for the gift of marriage and especially for the 60 years together which you have graciously given to Ron and Ray Verigie. Bless them, Heavenly Father, that they may continually bless others with their example of wedded love and faithfulness. We praise you for the faith that you will give to Amelia Sykes in her baptism tomorrow. Bless her with saving faith. Use her mightily in your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Be merciful to us, O Lord, and hear our prayers. Grant to us the grace of your Holy Spirit that we may be led into all truth and be steadfast in the confession of Christ. Through him, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Be seated. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same manner also, 
he took the cup after supper and when he had given thanks he gave it to them saying drink of it all of you this cup is the new testament in my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of sins this do as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me the peace of the lord be with you always amen
Please rise. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you in true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. And let us pray. Lord God, bless your word wherever it is proclaimed. Make it a word of power and peace to convert those not yet your own and to confirm those who have come to saving faith. May your word pass from the ear to the heart, from the heart to the lip, and from the lip to the life, that as you have promised, your word may achieve the purpose for which you send it, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.